Call of Duty Warzone, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact. These are the kinds of games we like to play on our mobile devices, including emulators. And we're gonna be doing that on the brand new Galaxy Z Flip 6 and the Galaxy Z Fold 6 today. Now, Samsung just announced these devices. I have them here. Let's take a closer look what we have inside. So as gamers, these are fun devices to game on. They have very interesting form factors. The Z Flip 6 has, of course, a cover display, 3.5 inches, and it is a flip foldable. Samsung has a very clean design with nice aesthetics this year, uh, a little bit lighter in terms of feel, and that cover display still stays, stays at the same size. It's an OLED display, so it's not LCD if you've heard such rumors. And the internal display is also nice and large, allowing you to game slightly narrower frame, but still really solid overall. Now, can you game on that cover display? That's the first thing you're gonna be asked, and yes, you can. You can play your regular, of course, mobile games, whether it's Call of Duty Mobile on here, but it is a small display, so it's gonna be quite difficult for you to do that, but it is capable. There also is what we call game snacks, where you can actually add games that are more mobile friendly, simple things like Tiger Run, Stack Bounce. Uh, you can play those kind of games here quite easily. But, of course, when you open it up, uh, you do have the large display, which is a 120 hertz display, which is nice, and a maximum screen brightness of 2600 nits for both devices. That's pretty cool. 4000 milliamp battery in here, and we also have, of course, the Snapdragon HGN3. Now, looking at the Z Fold 6 here, this has a massive display internally. This is also 120 hertz refresh rate, 2600 nits. Same thing with the cover display. Now, you will notice the cover display is slightly wider, and when you see it compared to the Galaxy Z Fold 5, you can clearly see that it's wider, there's a better hinge as well. Uh, it's not, it doesn't look as much, but honestly, it really works well. Now, let's put it in, in this fashion. When you're gaming with just the cover display, it feels wider and more comfortable than last year. And you can do that quite easily. So playing something like Call of Duty Mobile and moving it into the internal display, you can also swap between both screens. I will mention that when you actually switch from the cover display to internal display, it might get stretched out depending on the game you are playing. So let's first start off, of course, with benchmarks because we want to know how well these devices are performing, especially with the kind of RAM and storage they have uh, for both devices. So we'll start off with the Z Flip 6 here, where we ran two benchmark tests. Uh, one at launch day and one the day after. So launch day, we, we got a single core of 1,871, a multi-core of 7,162, which single core was a bit lower than I expected, uh, but the multi-core was much higher than even the S24 Ultra. The day later, we got a slightly better single score of 2,052. So better improvement there. I think it was just me downloading a bunch of games on there. Now, when we move over to the GPU scores here, we got 12,578. This beat out last year's Z45, a huge number, and also beat out the S23 Ultra. So that is good to see. Now, when we move over to the Z Fold 6, single core scores are 1,847, uh, which is, you know, closer to the S24 Ultra, but lower. And uh, multi-core scores are 6,250. 38, lower than the S24 Ultra, but this is also a larger device with a larger display. So I kind of give it that. Now, when we have go to the GPU scores, we have 11,475. I expected it to, of course, be less than the Flip 6, but still under. Now you're going, look, Thunder E, let's jump into the games. And that's really important for us because gaming is something we love to do on this channel. So let's start off with, of course, Call of Duty Mobile. It's an easy game to play, something you can do on multiple devices. And we're able to run in here at the max settings for the game, and we're we'll able to get 120 frames per second, but in actuality, ran between about 115 to 120, depending on the gameplay period. But it was pretty smooth. And as you can see, I'm also using a controller here. And uh, honestly, you see why I wanted to use a controller, especially the Razer Kishi Ultra for the Z Fold 6 when we move to that. But performance on here is to be expected smooth, functional, and solid. Now, moving over to Diablo Immortal. This is a game that uh, a lot of companies kind of showcase whenever they're talking about gaming. So I figured I'll throw it in. 
and Diablo runs at a solid 60 frames per second. The highest settings wasn't available on the system. I'm not sure if it is on all systems, but we're able to play at the highest possible and getting 60 frames per second solidly on here without any issues. Then playing some PUBG Mobile on the Z Flip 6. Again, this is at the best settings. Uh, we're able to get 60 frames per second solid on here, extreme HDR which is good to see. Uh, gaming performance was smooth, was nice, and just felt really good. Then over to Genshin Impact. Now Genshin, I ran at the maximum settings possible, and I was able to start at 60 frames per second, but it did drop down to about 51 or so on here, and you can see the performance dip with Genshin Impact, so that's something to, uh, to take note. Now with uh, Call of Duty uh, Mobile Warzone, this was quite interesting. With Call of Duty Mobile Warzone, we saw some very interesting FPS performance. Now, when we went to peak performance on the system, uh, we're able to get only 30 frames per second. That's as much as it could do. And then when we change over to smooth gameplay, we're able to get uh, roughly around 60 frames a second. It dipped down a little bit, but it went between 56 and 60. So really nice performance here, and I think a lot of people will like it. But honestly, let's take a closer look at some of that extra gameplay. That was pretty awesome there in terms of this gaming performance. You can see how well the Z Flip 6 handles games. Now the aspect ratio might not be too alike and some things might be a little bit stretched or narrow depending on the game. But I do like the performance on here and I, in terms of temperatures, we got about a maximum of 105 degrees. While gaming internally, we've seen about um, 100 and between 100 to 105 or that's roughly 38 to 41 degrees Celsius so performance is pretty good so why is that the case well Samsung has some new vapor chambers on both devices there is a larger vapor chamber up to 50% larger on the Z Flip 6 to give you better cooling better temperatures all around and that's on the top side of it so internally when you look at it you can see it's a much larger square area for that now what about gaming on the Z Fold 6. Don't let this device fool you. It's super light. That's a very big advantage for gaming, especially for long uh, periods of time. It is much lighter than the Z Fold 5. I don't know what percentage is, about 18 grams off, but it definitely can feel it, which means when you're holding your hands to game, it feels like a lighter device, or even if you're attached to a controller. And of course, that love of this player 2600 nits really showed. So take a look at our very first game, which is Call of Duty Mobile. Handled very well, about 118 to 120 frames per second at, of course, the maximum settings, very smooth gameplay experience all the way through. Then, of course, there is PUBG Mobile. PUBG Mobile gameplay was pretty smooth, and I love the fact that with PUBG Mobile, it just felt really comfortable, and that screen real estate goes a long way. You're gonna see that a lot in this video, that the screen real estate of the Galaxy Z uh, Fold 6 really does a great job um, in here. Playing at Extreme HDR, I was able to get some just solid frame rates, almost close to 60 locked on here. Now when we move over to Diablo Immortal, this of course, as you expect, similar to the Z Flip 6, uh, settings were at the maximum for the system and we were able to get 60 frames per second. But playing with the controller, again, just made it so fluid and smooth. Uh, which was great to see here. And it was just a lock 60 frame solid gameplay session. Now, Genshin Impact was quite different. We're able to get slightly higher frame rates at the same settings, which of course max 60 frames per second. Uh, it saved for 60 frames per second for about maybe, I'll say about five to seven minutes of gameplay. Then it started to fluctuate and dip. I would say we went between around 
53 to 60 frames per second. And I did about 30 minutes of gameplay. Same similar to 30 minutes of gameplay on the Flip 6. So you can see the performance here. And honestly, it handled much better on the Z Fold 6 than the Flip 6. I think maybe just because it's, it ran a little bit cooler as you see the temperatures on screen while gaming. And of course, finally, we have Call of Duty Mobile Warzone. Now with Warzone, uh, it was a little interesting, uh, where of course, when we played at peak settings, we were getting 30 frames locked, but when we played at um, FPS performance settings, uh, we're able to get some really nice uh, frame rates, 56 frames per second, maybe 60, something like that, but nothing at the maximum level. Now you're wondering, how does all this gaming performance look like or sound? Well, just take a listen for yourself. Honestly, I love the way gaming is on the Z Fold 6, especially just the size, the feel of the device. Uh, one thing I'll mention with temperatures is that this was quite outstanding. Samsung also has a brand new um, vapor chamber on here, uh, which is a bit larger. They didn't specify how large, uh, or, but I will tell you that temperatures were really good. Internally, it still picked about 41. Externally, uh, which is roughly around 105 degrees. Externally, I was getting uh, about 98 or so. So that was great to see. Sometimes it picked to 100, but again, really good temperatures and well dispersed across the device for great gaming needs. Now, as gamers, we also like to play emulators, and I didn't have enough time to download a lot of emulators. Internet was kind of slow, but I was able to download God of War Chains of Olympus on the Z Fold 6 and the Flip 6 GameCube game Mario Kart. So starting up with the Flip 6, Mario Kart handled well, 60 frames a second, very smooth, and honestly was a great and simple experience. These processors can handle it quite well. The age, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 uh, really does a good job there. And then on the Z Fold 6, the PSP game, that also handled well. I actually picked higher than 60 frames per second. I was also running this at basically rendered at 4K resolution. So this was really good performance here. And I appreciated that. Honestly, solid game performance all, all across. Now, when it comes to battery life, I will give you my initial estimates. It might not equate to in the long run just because this, I've only been gaming on this device for two days. Now, in terms of battery life uh, for the Z Fold 6, uh, within uh, roughly around two hours of playing, I lost about 25% battery life. Uh, this is, of course, with my brightness uh, past 50% and my volume also uh, a little bit uh, at 50 and uh, playing all those games that you saw. So that was some pretty impressive battery life. While with the Z Flip 6, uh, with the bigger battery, it does help and improve. Uh, I was able to do two hours of gameplay also on that. And from 100%, I dropped down to roughly around close to close to 80%. I'll say about 78, 80. So great gaming performance from here as well. Now, are these really solid gaming devices? Yes, they are. Uh, you have the performance, you have the vapor chambers, you have all the things you need. I'm not saying you should buy this as a gaming device, but if you're a gamer and you want to pick up the Z Flip 6 or the Z Fold 6, you're going to get a great gaming experience. And that's one thing as gamers we love to see. So let me know what, what you guys think. Do you think that the improvement Samsung has done gaming on this device is worth it? Or maybe it's still similar to what you expect. 
I want to hear your thoughts, leave them down below. But for me, I think this is really great improvement, especially with those vapor chambers and the performance you want to see. I do wish the Samsung had gone with the 8S Gen 3. I just wanted to see what that performance is on here because I think that processor really has some really unique perks overall. But leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy entertainment.